Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're running a number of webinars at the moment. As most of you probably know, we've uh, we've actually been running them for about the past seven or eight weeks now, um, and in fact, probably even longer than that. And actually, we've we've gone through quite a number of different um, subjects and different you know things that we want we wanted to go through with you. Just to give you a bit of a sort of overview of those that are available on our YouTube channel, if it's something that you wanted to look back at, we've run through some stuff around home working uh, in the crisis environment, which actually is extended out to um, home working generally, really. We've run some sessions around uh, specifics with our current customers, which were sort of surgery based sessions that allowed people to sort of come and ask questions and um, you know go through where they were struggling, what they were what they were finding difficult to do at the moment. We've run sessions around um, PCI with Wayne Campbell and uh, John Greenwood going through, a guest speaker John Greenwood going through. We've run some sessions around um, product overview specifics. So we've gone, um, you know, holistically across our entire product suite and gone, you know, through where those things could be used and where people might see additional benefit in using those. We've been through a number of webinars around our version 13 products release. Um, we've done some sessions on integrating the call centre. That's one I ran for you guys a couple of times already. The last one being last Monday, I think it was. Um, we've run some sessions uh, around online systems, but actually I've got some sessions coming up over the next few weeks around specific integration for online systems. I've got one of those on Friday, so if you're interested in that, drop us a message and let us know. Um, and we've run some sessions about using cost effective payment channels. So we've done quite a lot of stuff. And really, just before we got into this, I wanted to make people aware of that because there are people who have asked us, can we run a session on you know, such, and such, such and such a thing? And we've, we've actually already done that. So on to today's, um, I didn't introduce myself at the start. I'm James Pickering. Some of you probably know me. In fact, probably many of you do now, actually, with these different sessions we've been running. Um, I'm one of the pre-sales or product consultant guys with Pay360. Um, I've been here over a decade now, so I like to think I'm fairly comfortable with most of the things we've, uh, we've got to offer in the product set. It's been a bit of a strange one over the last eight to ten weeks. Obviously, everybody's had the same sort of thing, but my role is usually out on site with you guys and, um, you know, visiting you and giving product demos and consultancy around how our systems work and, and you know, what, what you can do with them. Um, but obviously, the last few months have been me sitting at home. Um, we've done quite a lot of one to one sessions with customers. We've done a number of these, like I said, webinar sessions that we've um, we've kind of hosted that we've actually had some great feedback on. So thanks for that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we'll be we'll be continuing doing these moving forward for the foreseeable future. One thing to point out at this, I know most of you probably do know how to do this already. Um, there's a Q&A feature within the, the webinar session. Uh, if you give the mouse a wiggle on the screen, you should see it. There's, an, uh, there's a little button that's Q&A. If you've got specific questions around this session that we're running uh, or actually any of the sessions or you know any questions to us in general, do drop us a message through there. There's myself and a colleague of mine um, who are sort of monitoring that as we go through today. But really today's session specifically is around uh, debt recover after this event's over. So I think we're all touch wood here, uh, hoping that we're going to come out of this pretty soon. Things seem to be kind of returning, returning to normal now. So actually, what does it look like in a in a payments world moving forward? Well, what we've really seen quite a lot of, and, and Wayne will go into this in a bit more detail in a minute, is people saying to us, look, you know, we've noticed our arrears has gone up or debt uh, in general has gone up. And how are we going to deal with that? What are we going to do? What options have you guys got that can help us collect that debt um, easily and securely from customers? So this session today is sort of all around that, really. Um, Bit of housekeeping, uh, like I say, you know, use the Q&A session. This should take, it's probably till about half past today, so it's not a really, really long session, but do ask us questions as we go. So what I'll do, um, I'll hand over to my colleague, Wayne Campbell. Um, he is another one of our pre-sales guys. Uh, you've probably seen him before on these sessions. We've been a bit of a duo over the last eight to 10 weeks, not always having the same uh, opinion on things, which is always quite interesting. And we do often, <laughs> get interesting messages from you guys when we uh, get into a bit of a bum fight here on the on the sessions, but that's great. Um, so Wayne, I will pass over to you. Remember to unmute your mic if you wouldn't mind, and I'll pass over to you just to give us a bit of a, uh, an idea of the session today, what you're going to cover, and then, um, yeah, get into it. So thanks very much. Um, Post-COVID-19, 
and flexible payments. Um, really aiming at a number of the underutilized um, tools that Pay360 can offer that accommodates um, assistive technology to really benefit the um, payment suite you're already offering your customers, but may, may not offer the, the flexibility uh, that, that you require over the coming months and year. Um, central government has has mandated in different sectors to be fair requirements to defer debt of different types so within the mortgage industry a, a lot of people have taken advantage of um, deferring mortgage payments for a number of months uh, specifically if they've been on furlough or, or, or there has been a financial impact on on their family and that that's basically what this session is going to be covering uh, is the, the tools that can be used to assist in um, in that instance. So if you could pop over to my slides, please, James, that'd be great. And we'll just go through the messaging if we could. Great. So, as we all know, COVID-19 has had a massive impact on our society in a number of different guises, both uh, more importantly than anything else, uh, health, uh, socially uh, and family and, and all of our day to day lives. Um, but there is a hidden impact that, that, that will raise its, its ugly head, unfortunately, over the coming months. Um, to, uh, and it will impact a, a great deal of people, those that possibly haven't been affected and have felt sort of, you know, safe over the past, you know, 10 years or so. They're now feeling more vulnerable and certainly a, a local authorities um, strategy uh, on both debt recovery and how they deal with, in the first instance, um, debt recovery and, and socially vulnerable customers as such is really going to come to the fore now. So we, we are looking at a debt increase of financial burden and liability for those individuals. And basically it's what they've, they've been advised to do if they are in uh, an adjusted cash position um, following lockdown. And what they've got to focus on uh, very heavily is prioritising uh, their debt, ensuring over the coming months um, that the, um, the list of debt that they have accrued during this time, even though they've been allowed to, is, is addressed correctly and they're going to have to manage that financially themselves but with organisations who are going to be able to assist them and offer them the um, adequate, adequate tools and applications to be able to facilitate that assistive and socially responsible messaging. Avoiding payment friction within your platforms and solution is, is one of the key elements and ways to achieve this. Um, obviously, um, clients who pay, for example, face to face, and that's been obviously very difficult over the past few months, um, will have looked to alternative ways to process payments and the introduction of digital technologies uh, has gone up considerably during this time, as we've seen within our own infrastructure, the transaction numbers have got, gone up. So, so people are starting to understand those technologies uh, and the benefits of using those as well. But it's important when you look at things like payment friction and the introduction of newer legislation, for example, um, PSD2, which is the Payment Service Directive, the second iteration of that, and something called uh, RTS SCA, which is the Regulatory Technical Standards for strong customer authentication. Uh, the introduction of this with um, electronic payments or distance payments will most definitely introduce friction um, within a standard e-commerce transaction. Um, and any friction, any disruptor to a payment flow um, can mean that a debt whilst being paid once again may end up being deferred if, if the journey isn't as simple as it should be. So assuring that those journeys whilst online and making those payments is as simple as possible is absolutely essential. It allows you to gain commitment and consistency as far as payments being processed within your environments are concerned. 
giving your customers choice once again is essential uh, a choice of the way they pay you and the choice of their commitment to pay and there's some other things that we're going to be focusing on today when we look at the payment options that you're going to be able to present to your customers when you're having these conversations with regards how they should manage their debt to you as an organization uh, and i think you know we are all human and we all understand that there will be lots of difficult conversations and there there will be lots of sort of human understanding in between yourselves as an, as an organization and those customers and giving yourself as an organization the flexibility to be able to offer alternative payment routes and payment plans to your client base will almost be essential moving forward. So central governments sent out um, a considerable about, amount of messaging around financial uh, impact and, uh, and debt uh, for individuals. One of those is depending on if the taxpayer qualifies an additional reduction to their annual council tax bill of 150 pounds. Now, obviously that's not so much payments related, but it's, it is a good news story that obviously all of your staff should be fully aware of. So they can obviously include, you know, good messaging like that in any conversations when they're talking to their clients about debt. Um, councils do have discretion as well with regards to debt, how it's managed uh, and how the liability sits. Um, and I know there's additional grants and finance available from central government as to how difficult that is to get. Unfortunately, that's that's more with yourselves than 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 pay 360. But using all of the tools and all of the avenues that are available to you as, uh, as an organization is going to be essential through the you know the difficult months that are coming forward. So here are, here are the, the, the statements and facts from from government. They're saying coronavirus and the current public health measures are likely to make consumers more vulnerable. And that's that it's almost obvious, but, but that, that is the case. And that will include customers um, that, that certainly haven't been classed as vulnerable before. Um, it, it can affect uh, families of all types, all shapes, all sizes. Um, those vulnerab vulnerability uh, impact uh, events would be uh, along the lines of, of these listed on screen. So we've got loss of income from losing employment or being furloughed, the impact of long periods of isolation on mental and physical health, uh, the ability to work and care for others, and that impact both um, um, emotionally, mentally and financially um, can certainly distract their mind to what they would see and most certainly I would agree to more important things within their day to day life uh, rather than just you know paying an outstanding bill which grows and grows and grows and then becomes a much bigger issue in itself. So early inter intervention where possible is absolutely essential. So moving on from there, there's um, lots of guidance online both from um, uh, uh, central government but also supporting industry websites uh, like local gov um, uh, and i've got some links within the slide deck which we can share after the session um, this this once again is an important message um, and it's talking about the importance of fairness and responsibility um, and as it says within the text uh, there is little doubt that people in debt respond more positively when creditors employ an approach that provides appropriate solutions informed by a full understanding of their financial situation. Um, and you as an organization may put yourselves in a difficult position to be able to assist a client who is having difficulties like that without the tools to back up what you want to be able to socially deliver and assist with. And that's what today's sort of key messaging is about, being able to assist and help and offer flexible solutions. More online guidance, and once again, I'll, uh, I will share this after the session has finished. And this documentation from the LGA um, was published in 2018, uh, the Reshaping the Financial Support uh, Guidance. Um, 
and that was focused on just supporting low-income households and those in financial difficulty more and more people will fit into that uh, threshold of of people now post COVID-19. Also on the LGA uh, government website, there are a number of guidance documents and links to very in informative um, uh, documents uh, on their website, all specific to uh, to COVID-19 and how to manage those. And there's, there's lots of assistive technologies on there as well, including virtual events uh, and online forums. Certainly something if you are working in the local government uh, environment uh, that you should look to for information, because I, I know for a fact that sometimes information from management doesn't always cascade all the way down. So this this allows you to go to directly to the source and get the information from the horse's mouth as such. Once again, in addition to the local government association guidance and central government guidance, um, the Money Advice Trust is a great um, place to signpost for information. Um, lots of information there on um, uh, obviously people struggling with COVID-19, council tax debt, and once again, how the regulation uh, can and will impact on that. So um, good reading. Uh, certainly to, 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 let, to allow you to understand both the situation when it comes from central government, but also understanding the individuals who are now going to be classed as the debtors and ensuring all of your tra uh, staff are fully trained and are enabled to be able to signpost to the likes of citizens advice and other online help uh, will certainly assist as well. So focusing on pay 360 and payments and debt specifically um and although that's a blase statement on screen how to ensure you're top of the list of people to pay it's obviously why you're attending that's why that that as far as income control and debt recovery is concerned that's that's literally top of the list of things that you need to do but we need to do it in the right way so a few bullet points make it simple as simple as possible for people to make payments, try and remove friction and remove those blockers to transactions. Give choice, as much choice as there is available within the technologies and payment platforms uh, available to you as an organisation. Make sure that all simply and easily signposted, make sure all of your staff are well trained and versed in how to direct your customers to those, those payment points of interaction offer flexibility. So the flexibility uh, I'm talking about is the actual debt itself. So whether you, you, you ideally want to be able to collect that debt when, when you're looking at, uh, at either council tax or business rates. And I know there's a number of other assistive legislation around business rates in addition to this, but offering your debtors the flexibility to pay not just within year, but post uh, financial year as well may be required most certainly over the next year or two um, post COVID-19, whilst people you know, find their own position and um, try to ensure that they get their own sort of financial and social stability back once again. And importantly, check out abandonment. There is a large proportion of debt that is uh, almost missed down to the fact that people do commit to pay and do go online with the with the real reason of paying off a debt, but at the point they are checking out, they abandon. And, and there's lots of reasons for that. You know, some, some of the some of them are social, uh, mental stress, but one of them, and the, the largest checkout on abandonment reason is friction, uh, or the experience of processing that payment in a non-simple way. Um, you will use or 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 utilize an alternative of, uh, way of organizing with an organization and paying them rather than that difficult checkout experience you had online, for example. Um, and at that point, as soon as they make that decision, what happens is there is considerably more opportunity given time for the individual to be distracted and prioritize something else by way of being top of the list of people to pay. So let's look at the payment channels that Pay360 provide and 
what we can do to help in addition to the core payment channels that we provide. So you will have seen this image before being a Pay360 customer. Um, it is a circular overview with um, a central uh, database and transactional structure of all of the payment information that is receipted and received by the payment channels that Pay360 provide um, and ensuring that the payment channels themselves are cost effective using the latest security, ensuring that they're easy to use for staff and for customers, absolutely essential. And that's how it's viewed on screen. And there are additional sub modules that are available to make things slightly easier at, at each point of interaction. And those are the, those are the uh, modules that we're going to be focusing on today. So more guidance from uh, local government there, benefit customers, and the importance of that statement um, is that local authorities should be willing to negotiate payments at any point in the process and should work with payers to agree affordable and sustainable payment plans. But in essence, you've got to have the tools to be able to do that. OK, so let's focus on the first one on screen, which is planned payment management. Now, this is a, an additional module available from Pay360 as a, an enhancement to Pay.net. Pay.net itself, browser based, very simple to process transactions, but with the additional functionality of being able to create a template within the payment process that links back to the line of business. So for, you know, in this example, a, a council tax payment plan that's outside the core line of business standard 10 month recovery process. You want to let's say uh, add an additional three months that's allocated to the debt, but you can't manage that within the council tax system. You'll be able to manage that out with the council tax platform on the pre pay 360 income management solution. Uh, creating the dates and times that the payments should be made and then that automatic payment that is scheduled and gains commitment from a customer will then automatically process them transactions. One thing we've found specifically with planned payments that are card related rather than linked to an original debt and an original mechanism for making that payment, so maybe for example direct debit, is there is no risk, no financial liability with regard to any failed payments. With a direct debit, obviously, there is a financial impact. <clears throat> Excuse me. With card payments, um, there is no uh, banking fee to a failed DD. What happens is both the customer and yourselves are notified of any failed transaction. And that allows you to then proactively manage that debt and have that socially aware uh, compassionate conversation around the debt and how that should be managed. And viewing the screen we have up at the moment, that would or could be a member of staff going on, noting that a payment had been failed, renegotiating and recalculating the debt over a separate amount of time. And that can be done at the point a payment plan is made or, or with legacy payment plans that are held within the system. So if that had already been running for two months and uh, payment three had failed, the member of staff would be able to go in, amend the debt and change the instalment plan to match uh, the requirements. It gives you the ability to be an understanding organisation and sh show the flexibility to rearrange that debt to meet the needs of the client based on, on their changed financial infrastructure. Second application we're just going to view and highlight today and all of these at the end, what I'm going to do is signpost because we're, we've got full demonstrations and videos of the applications as well. And, and I'll, I'll cover this towards the end, but we are planning to do uh, individual one to one demonstrations on these as well. The second application is Core Secure Digital Plus, which we really have focused on specifically for customers and organisations who need to be able to distribute um, home working secure payment facilities but also facilitates you know, transactions in, a, uh, in an environment where you are mediating the, uh, the call from start to end, but presenting a digital form for processing a payment through to the customer on their phone. 
and this can be done in a number of different environments uh, and ways as well depending on how you would like to deploy the application it fully supports home working and telephone payments and um, takes the credit and debit card information away from the telephone call infrastructure and moves it over to an e-commerce transaction this could also be utilized over the coming months for any type of debt recovery where you and this is taking account of social distancing need to speak to a customer face to face given the fact that you may be stood at the end of their garden having a conversation around debt and you can you can literally send them a link on the fly whilst whilst, whilst they're holding their phone but with no social distancing uh, interaction requirements it, 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 it really supports a lot of different environments and, and uh, we, we can we can show that further with with one-to-one -one demonstrations if required essentially it, it it removes the card data from the telephone environment um, and there is no telephony or no direct complex integration required for the platform at all perfect for home working but also as I mentioned before as we've identified Perf perfect for socially distanced payments um, where uh, another of our pay 360 customers actually identified this as a function that it could support was um, taking payments in a uh, in a market uh, for example for the stall holders uh, and works absolutely perfectly for that and importantly and here's the great news it is free the application and platform itself is free for six months transaction start charges still apply but this is a tool that should be seen to be used and is helpful throughout the time of both um both lockdown and post lockdown uh, and whilst capita have made the decision to make the application free certainly why not take advantage of that and if you need a full demonstration of how that platform form works please please ask and we can arrange that for you very soon so on to the final platform uh, once again underused within the pay 360 customer base but very heavily used within both private sector and the banking sector um, specifically aimed uh, at debt recovery and the automation of that so this is an application that allows you to create a number of cases the cases are are, are logged as claims each individual claim is then assigned a scenario so the scenario itself when the uh, when the accounts are populated into the platform um, then follow a set route that scenario could be for example on day one of the debt um, an SMS is sent out to the customer saying you know, this debt is uh, required to be paid here is the link and once again removing the friction the customer wouldn't have to type in their account number or their amount um, and used as a tool to support you know, socially responsible debt recovery post COVID-19 you've got control over the scenarios and plans so both the messaging and the options given to the customer as far as um, how how you communicate to them with regards to the options to pay are completely within your control. Um, so you'd start off, let's say, for example, with an SMS on day one. Then two weeks later, you haven't had um, any response to the customer. You may send a, a scheduled email out with uh, a more understanding message around. We understand that you know debt is of high priority to both yourselves and. Uh, and others given the current financial situation please contact us and or click on this link to process payments uh, or speak to us further and take advantage of the planned payments uh, features that we offer both within pay.net and on our internet payments platform to arrange uh, a payment to play uh, a, a payment plan so in essence that allows you to do a number of different things using um, automation those automation tools are basically doing the job that uh, a number of staff may need to do post initial communication but if this in essence removes 
10%, 15% of that debt from the recovery process, then that removes cost to you as an organization. And once again, offers your customers additional flexibility um, and services by way to pay you as an organization. As you can see from the screenshots, um, the automated recovery tool has a, uh, a dashboard that the, you, you can view analysis on a, how successful a campaign has been, allows you to view the individual claims on a very granular basis, and also manage the scenarios as to how your customers are communicated to. In essence, that's it. They're the three tools that we see as very, very beneficial to support extraordinary debt outside um, your standard tool base and payment channels uh, that you would provide to your clients. It will make both their lives and your lives easier with regards to the options to allowing your customers the ability, uh, the flexibility to manage the debt in a different way because these are not obviously traditional times. Uh, things certainly have changed. There are links online to all three of the modules there, um, which I'll pop up on screen and just leave for a moment. We can, if you message us, we can send out the direct links to these anyway. Um, the one at the top is the version 13 uh, launch video. That includes um, a full demonstration of the pay.net planned payment module, um, which is available in version 13 of our application, but also to version 12 clients as well. Um, the second one specific to home working uh, covers the application um, where you are sending out links or emails directly to your customers with uh, all of the debt information pre-populated and allows you to process a secure online transaction and payment that importantly fully descopes for PCI DSS, but once again is something that assists by way of removing friction, uh, very importantly. The one at the bottom, debt recovery, is specific to the Pay360 Collect AI application, which allows you to create uh, cases, scenarios, and um, uh, direct links once again to process payment what it does is it logs all of the individual interactions within the application. So it will see when a, a customer click, clicks on a link, has viewed a link, has made a payment, and all of that feeds through directly through to your online secure card portal. Importantly, just a reminder, with the introduction of any payment channel or any interaction, ensure that you use the PCI DSS standards uh, as a fallback and a tick box exercise to ensure that credit and debit card information is not being exposed to either your staff or your technical infrastructure, your, you know, your telephones, uh, your network or your environment to ensure that you are securing yourselves through time of providing extended service to your customers. So that's sort of me completed on that. So um, hopefully you found that of use. Um, has there been any questions come through on the Q&A, James, through the session? Uh, there were a couple which I've answered as we've gone along, you know, specific okay. for individuals. There is one I've written down here because I thought it was probably worth us picking it up. Um, somebody says, like the idea of planned payments, but slightly concerned about the data and rekeying that might be required. I mean, that is a fair point. Um, I guess I'll pick this one up, Wayne, because it sort of does feed into what I uh, was going through last week. So last week I did run a webinar around um, integration to our pay.net portal software. And what that realistically means in a sort of shortened version of an hour long webinar is um, you can use our interface into pay.net, which you, like Wayne said, is the browser based utility. Um, and doing so then allows you to inherit the functionality within pay.net. So if you've got something like a CRM system or you've got uh, an e-form or something like that that you, you're driving the transactions with, uh, you know, customer calls up and you pick the call up through the CRM system, let's say, you can then integrate that into pay.net, which will then inherit the planned payments functionality that, that Wayne was talking about in there. Um, 
There are other things we can do around integration with the end of day files and the feed that comes out of planned payments at the end of day. But actually, if you are using that um, sort of real time integration, if you like, that, that's you know uh, asynchronous and feeding back the, the transaction afterwards, then you would realistically be able to um, to update the system in real time with the fact that a payment plan had been created for Wayne Campbell and it was going to be, you know, 200 quid or whatever it might be. So you could sort of feed that data back and, and do it in, in real time. Hopefully that answers that question. Uh, I've just seen another one's popped up that says a uh, customer has scheduled recurring payments. Is this different to planned payments? Um, planned payments is a new module, so it's it's effectively the, the successor to um, the scheduled or recurring payments module. That was a bit more limited in its functionality in so much as you could only um, set up a kind of one time type plan or a, a forever moving forward type plan. You couldn't do specific payment dates and there's all sorts of other functionality, which if you haven't seen it, it's worth having a look at our um, version 13 showcase stuff where we did talk specifically around plan payments and stuff. There's some really good functionality in there that gives it a uh, really granular kind of configuration level that you can go in and you can you know really sort of tweak those things specific to a, a particular customer. Uh, and then another one that's just dropped in uh, is the debt recovery tool popular with the education sector. Um, it's popular across the board, really. We we've actually got a number of customers using this in various different <coughs> excuse me different uh, areas. You know that there's there's a case to be you to, to use these sorts of things in in all sectors. Really, it's going to come down specifically to to your individual case, I guess. You know, it might be that there's political reasons you wouldn't want to use it, or maybe there's um, unlikely to be a technology reason, but there might be something at your end that was, uh, you know, wouldn't let you integrate or wh whatever it might be. If you have specific questions around that, um, let us know. You know, be interested to know what systems you are using, because I, I noticed your second point that came down there is especially due to multiple systems that customers are using. Um, let us know what systems you're using. We might already have a customer that is. Integrated I, yeah, using that no, stuff, or I, I think you're absolutely right, James. On that, it's it is worth a further conversation. I mean, the the real focus and reason on both this session and tools such as the debt recovery um, automatic uh, machine learning application uh, Collect AI is um, the ability to add a layer of business rules that are usually accommodated by interaction with um, outside agencies such as bailiffs. So if you can remove a large proportion of the debt by offering tools like this before it gets further down line to bailiffs, but what you're going to do is save a lot of stress and a considerable amount of cost and engagement with companies like that. So um, that's where we see the, the main benefit, even if it just addresses um, you know, a small percentage of those debtors, it, it overall pays for itself and more by removing the overall cost of chasing that debt either manually with your own staff or by way of engaging directly with, with bailiff teams that can be very costly. Perfect. OK. Um, there is one other question that's just come through. Thanks. We're on version 10 pay.net. So would this need to be upgraded for the planned payment module? Uh, yes, it yes. would need to be upgraded. Um, you can use recurring payments on the platform that you're on at the moment, which, like I said a minute ago, is the kind of the previous iteration of that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, for true planned payments and, and all of this new stuff we're talking about here, you will need to upgrade to the latest versions to do so. Um, if you want any more information around that and you haven't watched any of our version 13 showcase videos, like Wayne said, drop us a message, you know, more than happy to go through that stuff with you. There is that link to the YouTube stuff there, which you'll see um, see us running through that stuff. I think we I think that one you link to is is the one with the deal in it, is it Wayne? Yes. Where we have the, the product owner specifically around the version 13 product set who actually comes on and gives us a really detailed mm -hmm. in-depth in tour of that. And um, one thing on that, James, is our clients who have the um, version 10 recurring card payments module if they've set up existing plans within that platform, if they upgrade to the new planned payments module, um, what we do is we migrate all of those schedules over so there is a continuity of service. You don't have to leave the scheduled payments um, module running in the background to complete those plans. All the plans are shifted over. Perfect. Okay. Um, 
so that's all the questions we will stick around as we always do for another maybe 10 minutes afterwards uh, if there's any questions you can still contact us even if the session is finished the, the Q&A session does still work um, so yeah you know please do contact us let us know if there's something you want to see specifically you know got questions about it drop us a message we can set up some sort of private session if you need it but I guess on that thanks very much we we have multiple sessions coming up um, moving forward the same one will run again I think in a couple of weeks time other sessions about different various uh, subject matters and things so if that's something you're interested in and you haven't had exposure to that if you go back to your pay 360 account manager or, or a contact they'll be able to give you a list of the, sh the schedule of events moving forward so on that from me thanks very much appreciate your time understand everybody is busy and you know getting into these things is um, sometimes difficult so thanks very much we'll end it there thank you bye